Hello, I'm Liam, and we are playing Four Against Darkness. It's been a while. Um, when last we played, uh, we escaped Torment's Rest. We had, uh, let's see, here we go. We had the Anger Mace. We were sent to collect from a Gaunt Troll. Oh, where was the Gaunt Troll? Here in room six. Up here in the corner. Um... Uh, the Gaunt Troll had taken up residence here in Torment's Rest and uh, was in possession of this artifact desired by the Devigna Marcias. So that was our marching orders. Enter Torment's Rest, locate the Gaunt Troll, obtain the Anger Mace. So we spent some time after that just exploring and trying mainly to find some valuables to pay down our debt. Um to the Devigna Marcias. We weren't terribly successful in that regard. Um, everything amounted to about 325 gold pieces, which brings our total debt um, down to 4,032, which is still quite substantial. Um, so, but we did find some powerful items that we'll keep and use. Let's see, Throck found a masterwork two-handed hammer um, that explodes on a five in addition to a six. And, uh, who else? Elric came away with a shield of warning. Um, the shield of warning works even, um, if you're, uh, surprised by wandering monsters where normally the shield wouldn't, um, uh, wouldn't add to your defense in that case, but the shield of warning does. So that's cool. Um, let's see, what else? I had a look <clears throat> at the rules for Four Against the Abyss. And we are not as close as I'd hoped to beginning that content. The rules here, uh, there are four ways to lead your party into the deeper dungeons collectively known as the Abyss. One, starting on a standard dungeon, your party levels up to fifth level and you accumulate four more XP. Um, our party is all level, let's see, Throck, Throck is a measly level 3, uh, everybody else is level 4, Elric, Blesk, and Jim, and they are supposed to be 5, so that's a problem. Uh, second way, your party is already 5th level, and you amassed 4 XP, um, Let's see, third way, you pay 500 gold pieces in training costs per character at the end of the adventure. Um, fourth, you play one of our ready pre-made pre uh, adventures of levels 5 to 9. This one's interesting where you pay in training costs. Um, this training makes your character ready for the abyss. Beginning from the next adventure, you start using the rules in this book. You may also level up your party with a mixture of XP and gold pieces. I assume I assume they still want you at fifth level. Uh, and then you're so normally you're at fifth level, you earn four more XP rolls, uh, but you don't use those because uh, the way the starter rules work, right? When you level up you're gonna roll a six-sided die and you have to roll higher than your level. So, um, I guess you could roll a six and go from fifth to sixth level, but the rules stop you at fifth. So, but it gets harder and harder to level up, right? So, Throck needs a four, five, or six, so he's got a 50% chance of leveling up. Our other folks here, uh, they're going to have to roll a 5 or a 6. So they only have a 33% chance of leveling up. So it could take us several dungeons, <laughs> if, especially if we're unlucky, to uh, get everybody to 5th level. So um, I think the plan, my plan is we'll do one more non-abyss mission. Uh, and we'll see what we get our, our level to. And then we'll supplement everything else with gold and that'll basically add to their debt which is unfortunate but hopefully that's balanced by i assume the rewards in the abyss are um are more valuable so that is my plan um let's see if we looked at the journal here that was the seething scar um palace of nightmares 
Torment's Rest. Uh, I think we covered everything there. This was the first adventure where we left several places unexplored. Uh, and I, I'm, I don't like that. So, <laughs> um, I don't like leaving places unexplored. So I'm going to try to avoid that in the future. Um, I suppose that the Vigna Marcias could still use this and send in a, a, a mop-up party to um, go in those empty rooms or whatever. But who knows what's in there. Could have been valuable. Uh, it's driving me nuts. So uh, I'm going to endeavor not to do that again. We're going to try to explore the whole thing. I do like to keep it to about 12 rooms just for manageability and fitting nicely in this journal. But that's that. Uh, what else do we have going on here? We looked at our remaining debt. Uh, our faction has uh, gone up to three because we completed that quest, that patron quest, to um, to retrieve the anger mace. So a couple things happen there. We get an XP roll, and we're going to try to level up Throck here. Um, so, like I said, he's level three. He needs a four, a five, or a six. To level up ah, and he doesn't he fails the roll so that's a bummer I did carry over um, the minion count from the previous adventure uh, so when we get to 10 there we'll get another XP roll so we're really close there so um, what else oh the faction stuff starts to get interesting now with the factions here when we're up at faction level three, the max I think is five. Let me go down to Brunhilda. Here's good old Brunhilda de Vigna Marcia. Let's see. We did our patron quest. Oh, we get two random spell scrolls. I almost forgot. That's the other reward for completing the patron quest. So there's a couple other options there. I'm doing the spell scrolls because that's the most valuable to these these guys so here here's the table it's a d6 roll um the quartermaster opens up that closet of spell scrolls and pulls out a sleep scroll excellent and a blessing scroll i think we'll give the blessing scroll to um i was gonna give it to elric because he can use that but if something were to happen to Elric, it would be nice to have somebody else be able to do a blessing. So I think we'll just give them again to Blesk. So she gets a second sleep scroll and a scroll of blessing. Okay. That is the faction quest rewards, but... For getting the faction level three here, um, where is it? Okay. Um, special rules. Buying perfect cheese, we don't have that supplement. Um, any roll of one or two on a vermin table results in an encounter with 2d6 unicorn hairs <laughs> instead of monsters. See the sidebar, and that's on the previous page in this dark uh, block down below. 2d6 unicorn hairs. This is a reference to uh, uh, um, uh, a monster from long ago from another RPG. Um, All Mirage is a clue there. Level 3 vermin. Uh, treasure 1 food. Let's see. 1 food. What's the deal? Brunhilda buys them alive for 10 gold apiece. Um, at your discretion, a rogue, a merchant, or any class that makes saves can attempt to sell a bundle of, uni of their horns as if they were unicorn horns. There's no, I don't have that supplement. So basically, Brunhilda will buy them alive for 10 gold apiece. That'll help pay down their debt if they run into some unicorn horn, uh, hairs. But we have to subdue them uh, rather than kill them. And uh, I think that means we attack with a penalty. So, uh, if we run into those, <laughs> we'll deal that. <coughs> we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Unicorn hair. So I'm going to throw them in the mix. Rainbow's gold. If your faction score is three or more, <clears throat> as a gesture of gratitude, Brunhilda offers you her grandmother's cookbook. 
As long as you serve this patron, you need to spend only one clue for a recipe for a potion. And then there's another reward. I can cook this in the chimney from... That's four against abyss. We're not there yet, but let's look up what this recipe for a cookbook is. We haven't had a chance to deal with um, clues and secret yet. You generally need to find three clues before you can do anything with them. Um, Throck found a clue in the prison. Uh, Jim just found a clue in the Torment's Rest, and that's the total number of clues that we've found. But uh, it says here, um, a character found a clue for something big, right? Clue in the character sheet. When the character has three clues, um, your character has discovered a major secret. The character immediately makes one XP roll, gaining a level if he succeeds by choosing one of the following game effects to represent the secret he discovered. Uh, make an XP roll. I wonder... Well... What does it say here? I'm wondering if we get to do that when we spend one clue. Character immediate... Um, Right clue. Okay, your character is discovered. The character immediately... Oh, wow. I don't think... When the character has... Okay, when the character has three clues, they've discovered a major secret. Character immediately makes one XP roll. Do we get to make an XP roll? I don't... Ah. Ah, we reduce the cost... Well, let's see what this thing is. Rainbow's gold. Grand uh, recipe for a potion. You have to kill at least two boss monsters and spend 50 gold pieces for the material components of this potion. After you've accomplished this, you purchase a potion of healing before every adventure at the cost of 50 gold pieces. Okay, they're normally 100, so you're, you're getting half off. Hmm. Um, okay. I'm going to have to put my thinking cap on about this and whether we want to do it right now or not. We've killed far more than two boss monsters. So maybe with a clue and 50 gold pieces, we could mm, hire this apprentice alchemist at home and buy potions at half off. But I'd kind of like to amass three clues first and get the XP roll, although we've done a number of things here and haven't. Um, only gotten two clues total. Uh, we'll come back to that. What else is on here? Um, there's some things about lizard men with captives, but that's also a supplement I don't have. So, I think in the end here, I'm ju we're just going to bring in these unicorn hairs. <laughs> and we'll decide if we want to let them buy healing potions at, uh, at half off. Maybe we'll do that. So, that is... That is that, I think. We've done the patron crest reward. Um, we're going to add some unicorn hairs. What else is going on here? Okay, I think that's enough bookkeeping. Um, let's see where they want us to head, uh, head next. We're going to pull up the Twisted Final Fights. Who are we fighting? So this... Oh gosh, what is it? Is it a D100 roll? Yep, D100 roll. So here's our tens. What are we looking for? The Divigna Marcias want us to take on an Etten adventurer. Wow, that sounds like something. Etten adventurer. Here we go. HCL, highest character level plus two boss. So if uh, if we met him right now, it'd be a level six boss. Uh, tier plus four life. We're in the first tier still, so that's five life. Not sound too terrible so far. Two attacks per turn. One grab attack inflicting tier damage and one axe swing inflicting tier plus one damage. That's one and two, respectively. Yet an adventurer is not immune to sleep, but it takes two successful sleep spell to put him to sleep. 
The first sleep spell affecting the creature will only make him drowsy, lower his level by one. The second sleep spell will put him to sleep for good. The two heads of the Etten adventure are frequently bickering. So all the creature, uh, all the creature's attacks are aimed at random targets. A target hit by uh, his grab attack. That's interesting. I, f I feel like I, I feel like I do that anyway. <laughs> I feel like, um, a target hit by his grab attack. It takes tier one dam tier damage and must save versus the Etten's level, or be thrown against another random target. Large characters add plus L to this save. Where so ogre? If we were an ogre, a troll, or a minotaur, it'd be harder for him to do this to us. Barbarians at half a level. All right, Throck. If the grabbed character is thrown, both the grabbed character and the new random target, the one the character slammed into, must spend their next turn to recover their footing and may not attack. All mundane weapon attacks hitting the Etten have a 2 in 6 chance of being ignored. Wow. Blows from Masterwork or Magic Weapons ignore this rule. Okay. I think, so Throck and uh, Jim has a magic weapon. Uh, Blesk has spells, but um, Elric, uh, well, <laughs> we'll just rely on his heels, I guess, for that fight. Ettens are very difficult to restrain. Any spell or attack that restricts target's movement. We don't have any of those. Treasure and so on. Great. Okay, Etten. At an adventurer, we are after we're hunting an Etten adventurer. Okay, um, where are we going? Let's see, we'll get our trusty GM's miscellaneous dungeon dressing. And we'll roll up a name for this place. So we'll do a D8 roll here. Four. The descriptor complex of tribe name. Okay, so we need a descriptor. What did I say? Descriptor complex of tribe name. Descriptor. Where's our D100? Our descriptor is 64, scorned, sneering, or mocking. And the complex is 87, sewers. <laughs> uh, 64, scorned, sneering, mocking sewers. The scorned s sewers of, we need a tribe name. I have not had to roll a tribe name before is that oh here it is 20 20 sided die what are the scorn sewers of the dark blades of dark of the dark blades it's the scorn sewers okay what were the other options 64 sneering sewers mocking sewers of the dark blades that's that's a mouthful. <laughs> uh, dark scions, crimson axe, dark blades, scorn. Let's roll one more time on this tribe name. Fifteen, black ravens, sneering sewers of the black ravens. The mocking, oh mocking, mocking sewer. No, sneering scorned. The sneering sewers of the this is of the black ravens. The sneering. This is the first time I think I'm not to. Let's try again. We'll go. Um, that's a little weird. Um, let's try five. Nope, that's a ten sided. Where's my eight sided? Here it is. Six. Pro proper name. Okay. Oh. GM's miscellany, I feel like you're really just a proper name. 
well, okay, we'll give it a shot. But I think this is not going to work either. Uh, ten. <laughs> B-H-A. Ba. We're going to ba. I don't know. <laughs> that might work. <laughs> ba. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna, I don't know. I'm going to go with that. We're going to ba. For hunting this at an adventurer. And um, I don't know what ba is. But that's where we're headed. Uh, or or scorn, 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 uh, scorn sewers, sneering sewers of the dark blades. Maybe I'll leave it up. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if we're going to ba, b h a. Let's do this. <laughs> uh, sneering or scorn? Sneering, sneering. Sewers of okay, the dark blades or the black ravens, sneering sewers of the of the black ravens of the dark blades of the black ravens, formerly known as the dark blades, also known as Ba, <laughs> the sneering sewers of the. The black ray. I really am. I can't decide what to do with this. Uh, of the, we'll go with the original of the dark blades. Uh, AKA Ba. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're letting me. You're letting me down, dungeon dressing. Okay. We've got our, we're going after our Etten Adventure in, uh, who is holed up in Ba. And, um, <laughs> what is he guarding? Um, we want Twisted, no, nope, that's, oh, yeah, let's see what's going on with the dungeon, Twisted Dungeons. What's going on in Ba? Uh, this is a 2d8 roll, so our first aid is a 6 and a 3. Unnatural fog. Okay, that's interesting. This is on page 24. Um, maybe? So what did we roll? 60 something? Where's the unnatural fog? There it is. 63. Visibility is scarce in this dungeon due to a thick, unnatural mist that permeates the rooms. All ranged attacks are at minus one until the end of the adventure or until a druid alters the weather. And we don't have a druid. This includes ranged attacks performed by foes. Okay, in that case, the character's defense rolls will be at plus one. Fair enough. Uh, ba is known for its unnatural fog. So, um, okay, ba, ba, the unnatural fog. What else? We need to. Is this? Uh, we're looking for twisted hordes. Do I not have that open here? I'm gonna find twisted hordes. Um. Oops. I'm gonna pull that up in just a moment. Twisted hordes. Here we go. Uh, what are we looking for? We are looking for. What is this? This is a. Is there a table here? D100 table. Okay. 38. 38. Eternal food cauldron. Right on. Um, during every rest period, the cauldron produces uh, two food points, or three if there's any halfling in the party. Alternately, alternatively, instead of producing food, the cauldron may be used to heal up to three damage caused by toxins, poison, gases, or acid. I don't know where the rules for food come in. Maybe that's a... F oh, there was a reward. I bet they come in... Um, 
with four against the abyss. So uh, maybe this is an appropriate thing thereafter for um, the for the reward for this, what I hope is our last uh, pre-abyss mission. So, eternal food cauldron. Okay, well, there are our orders. Um, we, uh, <laughs> I think we'll stop here for this episode. I think we've done enough damage. Um, when we play again, we will enter Ba, formerly known as the Sneering Sewers of the Dark Blades, uh, which is um, being oppressed by an unnatural fog, and wherein we hope to encounter the Etten Adventurer, who is guarding the eternal food cauldron that the De Vigna Marcias want uh, for their own. So, until then, friends, keep your lanterns lit and your hearts warm. Thanks for watching.